the Grammys are supposed to celebrate excellence in music. But the Recording Academy misses the mark so frequently that they're almost a joke among music fans. As one old Simpsons line shows, the Grammys aren't considered to be as prestigious as an Oscar or a Tony. There are currently 80 categories, which dilutes the value of the awards. And they've made so many slip UPS that they're not easy to take seriously. But still, the Grammys hold a rarefied place in music, Chance the rapper said he wanted to snatch the Grammy in a guest rap on Kanye West's ultralight beam, and then did, so it's a shame they get it so wrong so frequently. Here are the 20 most undeserving winners in Grammy history. Sheeran didn't even show up to pick up his Grammys. Ed Sheeran won two Grammys at the 2018 ceremony, the least deserving of which was in the pop solo performance category. Shape of You is a catchy but anemic pop song. It has nothing on Praying by Keisha, who did show up and gave a devastating performance of her song. A 20-year-old Eric Clapton song won instead of Smells Like Teen Spirit. Layla is a great song. There's no denying that. But it just doesn't make sense that Clapton's acoustic cover of his own song, 20 years later, beat Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit the defining song of a decade, in the 1993 Best Rock Song category. Kings of Leon should have never won over Beyoncé or Lady Gaga. Little more than an anemic one-hit wonder band, Kings of Leon had a remarkable stretch of Grammy success in the lat 20-hundreds, but the victories for Use Somebody went too far. At the 2010 Grammys, the band won the Best Record Award for Use Somebody, over Beyoncé's Halo, Lady Gaga's Poker Face, I Got a Feeling by Black Eyed Peas, and You Belong With Me by Taylor Swift. Fortunately, they lost the Song of the Year award to Single Ladies, Put a Ring on It, by Beyoncé. A cover album won Album of the Year over an Amy Winehouse classic. It's sweet that Herbie Hancock made a great album of songs covering his friend Joni Mitchell and that luminaries like Leonard Cohen, Tina Turner, and Nora Jones pitched in for the project, titled River, The Joni Letters. But shouldn't the Album of the Year award go to, you know, something new? The category in 2008 had Back to Black from Amy Winehouse and Graduation by Kanye West. 2018's Best New Artist winner makes little sense. At the 2018 Grammys, SZA was the most nominated female artist. She wasn't expected to win all of them, but surely the Best New Artist category would be a lock. It wasn't. She lost to Alesha Kara. And while Kara is talented, she was featured on Logic's song 1-800-273-8255 and had her own single here. SZA had one of the most critically acclaimed albums of 2017, with Control, and helped move R&B in a more relaxed yet addictive direction. A parody of John F. Kennedy won the Album of the Year Award in 1962. Back in the early days of the Grammys, the Academy was more tolerant of non-music recordings winning major awards. That still doesn't excuse Von Meter's anemic My First Family album, where he impersonated President John F. Kennedy, winning the Album of the Year Award. I Left My Heart in San Francisco by Tony Bennett, also nominated that year, would have been a better pick. Toto swept the 1983 Grammys instead of, pretty much anything else. The band won Record of the Year for Rosanna and Album of the Year for Toto 4, which is just strange. Rosanna isn't a bad song, necessarily, but it's vastly inferior to their own Africa from the same year, as well as Every Breath You Take by The Police, Sweet Dreams by The Eurythmics, and Beat It by Michael Jackson. Any of their songs and albums would have been better picks. Steely Dan had no business winning Album of the Year when Radiohead came out with Kid A. In 2000, Radiohead released an album that changed the course of rock music. Steely Dan made a mediocre comeback after 20 years. The Grammys just made the wrong pick here. 
Millie Vanilli undeservedly won 1990's Best New Artist Award and then lost it anyway. The irritating R&B group won over Indigo Girls for some reason. Hilariously, the Academy stripped them of their award months later upon learning they didn't actually do the vocals on their first album. The Grammys missed the mark again for 1969 Song of the Year. Bobby Russell's song Little Green Apples is a sweet, now obscure little track. It's nice, but not deserving of the award. The Academy should have given it to Hey Jude by the Beatles or Mrs. Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel instead. For one of the best ever years for music, a completely forgettable song won. The best contemporary song category for the 8th Grammy Awards for 1966 was an embarrassment of riches. Simon and Garfunkel released the album Sounds of Silence, the animals introduced We Gotta Get Out of This Place, the Rolling Stones launched Paint It, Black, the Beatles released Revolver, Matt Monroe came out with Born Free, the Beach Boys had Good Vibrations, California Dreamin' by the Mamas and the Papas, and the Monkees had I'm a Believer. Which song won the Grammy? None of the above. The award instead went to a song called Winchester Cathedral by the new Vaudeville Band, a song so bland it runs out of ideas after the first three notes. Some Guys Who Weren't The Clash won 1977's award for Best New Artist. With apologies to the Starland Vocal Band, the one-hit wonder behind Afternoon Delight, The Clash is actually the best band that debuted its first album in 1977. A Frank Sinatra retrospective beat one of the Beatles' most pivotal records. In 1967, Frank Sinatra won the Album of the Year Grammy for his two-disc retrospective, A Man and His Music. It's kind of silly. While Sinatra is an all-time great, he won the award a year earlier, for September of My Years, so it doesn't make sense to give it to him again for a greatest hits compilation. The Beatles should have won instead for Revolver. Christopher Cross won instead of some of the greatest artists of all time. You know Christopher Cross? That artist played on the radio when DJs give up at the end of the day and just want to go home. His self-titled album won the Album of the Year Grammy in 1981 instead of the other nominees, Glass Houses by Billy Joel, The Wall by Pink Floyd, Trilogy, Past Present Future by Frank Sinatra, and Guilty by Barbara Streisand. 2013 will always be the year Frank Ocean was robbed. It's true that Babel by Mumford & Sons was everywhere, but it didn't deserve to beat Frank Ocean's Channel Orange, one of the best albums of this century so far. In 1979, a one-hit wonder, once again, won instead of music titans. A Taste of Honey broke multiple records with their single Boogie Oogie Oogie, which is still fun decades later as a disco classic. But it was silly to give them the Grammy for Best New Artist. Toto and Elvis Costello were both nominated in the category that year. 2014 wasn't a great year for music, but Beck still didn't deserve the award. Beck's 2015 Best Album win for Morning Phase was more like a career capstone than a recognition for that particular album. Run the Jewels 2 by Run the Jewels, which wasn't nominated, definitely has more lasting power, and the award itself could have also gone to Beyoncé's self-titled album or GIRL by Pharrell Williams, which were both nominated. Creed's win for With Arms Wide Open is just insulting. The repetitive, much-despised band won the Best Rock Song Award in 2001 for With Arms Wide Open. It's a shame. Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers was another nominee that year and would have been a deserving winner. Giving two Grammys to Thrift Shop was a step too far. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's goofy song Thrift Shop was ubiquitous in 2013, but that doesn't mean it deserved to win awards. Especially Gobs Macking is that it won awards for both Best Rap Song and Best Rap Performance instead of tracks like Swimming Pools by Kendrick Lamar. Started from the Bottom by Drake, Holy Grail by Jay-Z, and New Slaves by Kanye West. 
a non-metal band won the first award for the best metal performance. 1989 was the inaugural year for the Grammy awarding the best hard rock or metal performance. Bafflingly, the band that won was neither. Jethro Tull, known for its trademark use of a flute, won the award instead of Metallica which, at the height of their talent and coming off the death of one of their band members, was expected to win. 1989 was also the last year for the award. Afterwards, the Grammys gave separate awards for rock and metal. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to channels.